All right, we have got Snowy, and Snowy was a guinea pig who was dumped and was pregnant at the time, and she's very, very young. She's had her litter. All three of the little ones did not survive. Four. Four. Oh, okay. That, that's right. There was a stillborn. Okay, initially. Okay. All right. So they were very small, and she was not lactating. There were lots and lots of issues. We weren't going to that. But she's losing weight. So what's her current weight today? I have recorded everything here. Yep. Let me give you this. Come on, show me. So the last time I weighed her was yesterday at 9 p.m. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it was 602. Okay. It had increased a bit. From a little before. bit. Okay. Yep. All right. Yes. And Maybe you said she's eating? She's eating normally. She's eating slow, but she's eating. But yeah. she's a bit picky on what she eats for vegetables. Okay. What's she choosing? So she would eat all of the foods, but she would eat Carrots first, uh, kale, she a, bit, a bit of kale I give her. Yeah. She eats lettuce and she goes finds something else and then she comes back to it a bit later. Uh -huh. She keeps like searching for something that's not there. Okay. Kind of. Yeah. But she will eat all of the food there. Yeah. It just takes a bit of time. Yeah. Because she's searching for something. Okay. The reason I'm giving her this stem is actually to see if she can actually eat that and bite into it successfully, which she can. Yeah. But when we look at guinea pigs who may have, they're losing weight. There's many different aspects to that. And you need to establish if there's more than, like is it something connected to what she's been through recently? Has she got some other problem on board? Has, is it a dental issue? So in testing this harder, more solid food, she's able to bite into it very easily. Yes. A guinea pig that had severe dental issues would not be able to do that yes. or would leave droppings of food. There'd be other indications there. With her, she's, she's munching away, it's like she's hungry. Has she actually got enough food around her all the time or do you feed at set times? She has always hay, mm -hmm. oat hay, long strand oat hay, 24 seven. Yep. There's usually a lot left over, which I just chuck and I change it twice a day yeah. for both of these skills. Yeah. Pellets, there's usually some left over. Yeah. I change it once a day. I give them uh, fresh grass every morning mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of vegetables and on a plate in each evening. Okay, yeah. So that's the food cycle. Okay. She has been a bit of um, getting critical care as you advised yesterday. Yep, okay. She wasn't really... How good. much were you giving her? So I had a small bowl. Yeah. Um, Made up. Her. Yeah. And then I just left it. I oh, so you left it for her to do. Okay. To up okay. I didn't want to serene. Yes, okay, yep. And I got my finger... And, and dipped it on her mouth, mouth. yeah. Did you like it? At first, no. Okay. But a bit later, I came back and did it again. Okay. She kind of liked it. She bit yeah. my finger. Okay. So she got a little bit, but she oh. just stopped. Right, okay. So she's not taking it herself. It's sat there since. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I just, because it's been a few hours, I just removed it. Mm -hmm. And at night, I returned it. Tried okay. Again. She wasn't really that interested. So mm -hmm. I gave her 0 0.2 mils in a syringe. Yeah. Just to help a bit. Mm -hmm. Just lightly to the side of her mouth. Yeah. Just very slowly with two pauses and pauses. Was she drinking the Dove Idolek herself? Was this back? Before? Yeah, before. Yeah. Uh, she, I don't think she was. Okay. What I'd like you to do to put into the cage with her is a little low shallow bowl of Dove Idolek. Okay. So just a low shallow one, like lower than that if you can, just tiny, tiny little one. Um, okay. And yeah, I'd like you to fill that with the Divitalex so she can go to it because it's an easy food to consume. They can lap it with their teeth and they certainly feel so much stronger after they've had it for a bit. I'll mix her up some in a minute. We're just going to have a little look here to see what we think is going on. She's not, she's a bit on the cold side at the moment. So there's something, you know, going on. Oh, probably because it's, she's been out there and oh, today. yeah, she's she's used to being inside for sure. So she's a little bit on the call, so she's very bony around the ribs. Yes. She is. is it just me? Because mm -hmm. when I listen to both pumpkin and Snowy's heart rate yep. or stomach mm -hmm. or chest, yep. hers beats faster. Yeah, I'll have a listen to that in a minute. 
Um, what's really interesting though is that she has no weight around her rib cage. She's all bones here. Mm -hmm. So she's very underweight. Um, she's lost a lot having, and she did have a big litter for her first litter, given that she's so young anyway. Well, it may not have been yeah. her first litter. I don't know. Um, but I'd say given her size, it probably is. Okay. Yeah, because she was way, yeah, she was little when she came. So, yeah, you've had her a month, is that right? No, About for, a bit longer uh, than that. Uh, two months, almost. Seven two months, weeks. okay, yeah. Seven weeks. Yeah, okay, and she littered two weeks ago? She lit a month ago. A month ago. Okay, I'm trying to put everything into time. So it was a month ago she had the babies. Pretty sure it was a month ago. Yeah, okay. So has she just started losing weight recently then, or? So in the past week, it yeah. has declined a lot. So much more. Quick. Quickly. Okay. But yeah. from birth, yeah. yeah, she has slowly. Okay. And I was hoping that she would pick up, but she did not. Right, okay, yeah. What's going on, Snowy? Let's have a look down here, hey? Sorry, it has been three weeks since you... Three weeks back. since the babies, okay. Okay. Okay, let me just listen to your chest. No, she's got an upper respiratory... She has got... She has... She's got an infection. An infection? Yeah, she has, yeah. It's not asthma. Let me just listen. Well, it, yeah, just hang on a sec. I can hear it. Yeah, the problem is in her lungs. She does have an upper respiratory infection. She does. The cause of that, um, but she's effectively got the infection in her lungs. It's with the lungs, they have four different areas that we listen to. So we listen to the top of each lung and we listen to the base of each lung. Her infection is here in the higher lobe. So it's in the top section, which is actually more positive because when it's down in the deeper sections of the lung, it's more like a deep set pneumonia. But the thing that is happening with her is it's a real crackle in that area. So it's like a little crackly sort of um, pop count and you can hear it right here, very close to that area. I'm just gonna listen again. That's what's going on. Yeah, it's very evident, it's right there. So if you listen to her right there, pick okay. her up, take a listen, you'll be able to say so that's what's going on. She needs antibiotics. So she's struggling because she's got that infection on board. And um, that's what we need to, to look at at the moment. When we talk about aspiration, we're talking about animals breathing in liquid content of some description into their lungs. Okay. Now, when you've got an adult guinea pig, they're very familiar with their mouth and oral cavity and how to lick and drink. They're familiar with those movements. When you've got pups that have literally come into the world, they're discovering this for the first time, how to chew, how to move, how to walk, what mum is, it's all new. So they are vulnerable. Um, they, they, they are naturally vulnerable. When it comes to feeding young, when they're first born, one of the biggest risks is what we call aspiration. And the reason that's a problem is that the babies are discovering if they're going to eat and nibble on something, they've got to swallow it, which goes into the stomach. Whereas when they breathe, it goes into the lungs. Now, if they happen to have fluid in their mouth and they try and breathe in, or they're trying to gasp if something is not quite right when fluid's there, that's when they aspirate. So when mothers feed young, the way that that process occurs is the teat is long enough to actually go past the connection where the baby can either swallow or breathe. It actually shuts off the breathing one so they can just suckle. But when you're feeding with a syringe at the front of the mouth, it doesn't cover that. So they can breathe in or they can swallow. So they are highly, highly at risk as babies. So that's the difference and why they're so vulnerable and why it has to be done in the exact way. Otherwise, you know, once they aspirate and the chances are, you know, you're feeding them a milk, milk supplement, they breathe that in, it's straight into the lungs. They then, when they've breathed something in, they do not want to eat because they're struggling to even breathe. Yes. 
So if you've ever been in a race and you've run a marathon or you're really, you know, your heart rate's way up there and someone said, eat an apple right now, you, would, you couldn't do it because you're trying to breathe. That's why they stop eating. Now, the problem in that instance is how do you orally give them an antibiotic if they're not eating, they're, tr they're struggling to breathe. So it has to come in an injection form. And the risk with little ones when they're so compromised, literally when they aspirate within a very short space of time, you lose them. So that's the risk and, and why we need to educate people on how to feed babies, what to do and how to do it, which I'll put more content out on that, but that's essentially the difference. Now, with an adult guinea pig that has a mild respiratory infection in here, regardless of how it's happened, and this can happen to people. This is why people in hospital, for example, you'll see they go into hospital for one reason, and then they get pneumonia in hospital and they die or they have a serious issue. It's because they're not moving. They're literally in one position. And if they're not moving, they're not circulating in terms of um, their body activity, um, their ability to cough and clear, those sorts, of, because they're immobile, they're, they're just sitting still. They're very vulnerable to respiratory infections taking hold. And then it's a battle between the antibiotic and the, the infection. So that's what's going on. That's why she needs an antibiotic to she get on top of that. Her eyes a few days ago. So okay. Must have been she was in pain. Pain. Yeah. Yes, pain. Definitely. So when they start squinting, they really are showing pain. And anything to do with the lungs and the severity of breathing, there is pain associated with that for sure. But yeah, without no question, she has a respiratory infection. So. Is her teeth all okay? Because last time yeah, we'll take a she look. also had the little teeth problem. Yeah, let's have a look at those as well. But you used the fire light and okay. it helped a lot. Okay, let's have a little look at the teeth. Come here, little one. I'm just going to wrap you up. And let's take a peek at what's going on in there. Hi. Hello, Missy. Yeah, I don't blame you because it's pretty. If this keeps losing weight, she like that has to have much time left unless it gets resolved. There you go. Let me have a look. Let's see. Is that sore in there? Have a look. Come on. Have a look. Have a look. Oh. Nope, she's got the tiniest little entrance to her mouth. She does. There we go. Oh, okay. Let's see, have a look. Come on. The top right's okay. Okay, there's another thing I do want you to do with her. Her teeth are fine, but she's got thrush. <laughs> so, thrush is, um, maybe look over my shoulder, you may see. But I want you to look down her mouth. What you're going to see is a very little white tongue and tissue down there. Can you see how white it is down the back of her throat? What, just tissue, it's, white tissue. It's white. White, yeah. white, white. That's thrush. Can you see the white right at the back? See the big lump of white on the back of her tongue? I see it there. Yeah. Try again. Here we go. Look in there. See? It's been very quick because she's still munching. Okay. There. You see, her teeth look yep. good down the back, but you see the big clunk of white? Yep. Sorry, she's very quick at moving. Yes. But that is thrush. So, But Miss Snowy has a little bit of thrush, oral thrush. Um, it becomes problematic when guinea pigs start getting sick and it matches the fact that she's got a respiratory infection and she's not feeling well. So it's like a secondary thing that, that can come on board. Her teeth are fine. So. What I'd like you to do is to give her some Nilstat, and you can get that from a chemist. It's called Nilstat, just over the counter, Nilstat. And she needs one drop before, um, 
actually it's better after she eats, but I mean with guinea pigs just to intersperse it, I would do it twice a day, one little drop orally into her, into her mouth. And you just literally put it on her lips, she'll lick it. She'll lick it. Twice a day. Twice a day, just one little tiny drop. Tiniest drop. One little drop, yep. yep. And that she'll literally lick that and it'll go into her mouth cavity. So you want to do that. We try and do it after they've had food, but because they eat all the time, that is the problem. So for example, when you feed her vegetables at night, give her 40 minutes or half an hour, leave her with it. And then before you go to bed, come back and give her the little drop of Milstat. So she's had a veg and she can still nibble and carry on. We wanted to do that because we want her weight maintained, but she needs a regular little dot of Milstat which will remove that from, it's it's like a big white hard lump at the back of her tongue, would be uncomfortable. Twice a day for? I would keep that up for the next week. Yeah, so do that for the next week. With her, she also needs an antibiotic um, on board for this this area. So keep her warm yeah. and comfy, but I also yeah. eating. Better soon.